Well, I just came back from the beach <laughs> and the camera didn't work. I think it's batteries, but I don't I don't know. Brand new batteries, they should be recharged. So I'll try it again tomorrow. But um really had an interesting experience at the beach and it's inspired a conversation. Um it was a beautiful, beautiful day. It was sunny. There was a sailboat on, on the lake, you know, and there were a couple of girls on the beach, you know, with just, you know, sunbathing. <laughs> and it's like I'm there in my winter jacket. And, you know, I was asking them, pushing it a little, aren't you? <laughs> and and uh, so it, it ended up starting a conversation that they had uh, just driven from far north, I forget. Fort McMurray or someplace, someplace really, really far, minus 40 degrees. So they were saying this is really, really warm compared to minus 41 degrees. So I used to live in a place where it was minus 60, so I can relate to cold weather and how warm it must feel because it was like 10 above with the sun. I even took my jacket off and it was hot, but I had to sweater on at the beach. <laughs> Anyways, um, they this one girl was having a lot of challenges with her son. She, I won't even get into the problems that were going on, but it led to a conversation, and um, it was like you you always are crossing paths with the right person at the right time, and it's I, I always you were so much smarter. <laughs> When you can see that, uh, when you think you are the teacher, you're actually the student, and you learn more from a conversation. So it may have appeared like I helped her out a lot by sharing an awful lot of information. The you can I can tell right away when it's not me talking that um, I've some shits come out of my mouth that was not me, and I could tell it was not me, and. Um, we do this all the time that uh, there are things going on in our universe that we're not really understanding is really going on but you can actually make somebody else say what you want them to say um, you're influencing people all the time and um, it's really really tough to see but hypersensitive I can really tell when okay I know I know I don't know that shit that just came out of my mouth where did it come from and I happen to be talking with somebody that's you know maybe into engineering or something why would I know engineering concepts or anything to do about engineering you know because the conversations actually the person is having a conversation through me and when you stop thinking you were the teacher but just let the conversation flow because it feels like it's such a natural conversation and it's about something that you generally don't know too much about but the conversation just flows then it may look like you're helping them but actually they're teaching you and you know the ego makes you think hey that was my good idea and if you're really attached to your ego you'll never be able to see it so it is a matter of really letting go of your ego and seeing when you're having the conversation or when somebody else is having the conversation through you sort of like having a conversation with yourself and you just happen to be there um, Spirits have a way of doing that too. That's why some people need to be have an exorcism because there's something consuming them, something's influencing them. It's seen with uh, multiple personality disorder or channeling that something else, somebody else is influencing you so much that. Uh, so it is sort of like. The conversation was channeled <laughs> if you really want to get into it um, through her so because there was stuff so anyways it's just an inspiration on what I'd like to talk about today that um, there's a patterns of abuse that she experienced same as me oh by the way if I went and told any of this in women's shelters they'd lose their funding so we don't want women to know this but it's not just women it's everybody that um, her son's an adult and I think he ended up in jail and it just wasn't a pretty scene and he had come down to this area to do some healing and she comes to visit and something broke out and she really really wanted to break this cycle that is being repeated in her family and 
Um, you know, they were sitting on the beach and just asking, you know, we got to solve this. This is enough. This is enough. Like they were really asking for answers. And then and the conversation showed up and really, really receptive to the conversation so naturally. And she felt like it was just speaking to her and stuff. And her neck is completely like she could only see t this vision, you know, her neck, she was in accidents or whatever, and you could tell she was so stressed and so tense and um, a lot of shit going on, which with this holodynamic shit, it can heal all of that stuff because it's a lot of her experiences are creating that stuff. So we had this really interesting conversation that I think is relevant to all of us that don't wait till your body's like near death from what the world global experience is doing and basically what what the conversation was like is that um, she's doing this she's creating it it's like when I when I was younger I knew it all good thing about people that want to know it all they always got to ask questions so they know it all so eventually at the end of the day maybe they might know something not to say that they know it all but it looks like you know it all so, um, if you declare that that's what you are, then you're going to create the experience that you know an awful lot of shit. Now, when I was younger, my parents were trying to say that I'm something that I knew I wasn't. And so that's when I decided, well, I'm going to have kids and I'm going to tell them what I see in them and, you know, listen to what they've got to say. So, um, the one angle I wanted to look at is that I programmed my kids to be who I wanted them to be. So I told them they were all geniuses. <laughs> and I was like, what a friggin' mistake. <laughs> so, um, try re raising um, geniuses. Um, it's not a mistake. I love, love, love my kids, but it's like to teach your, your kids to be a genius means I put the most hell on myself as possible because you try telling a genius they're wrong. You know, their egos are so freaking strong that they know it all. And I, most of the time they do know it all because they're freaking geniuses. I've created geniuses. So anytime that I try and do any form of discipline or whatever you try and coming up against a genius and you know they always got they're always right about everything and uh, then when you're a teenager and think you really know it all if you think you've got a tough mothers you know to to just hard to manage kids you try talking with a teenager that knows it all and then doesn't come out of it um, but when they do they really really teach me an awful lot so it's it's been a challenge so the conversation with this girl it was like what are you constantly saying about your son and some of the negative words that she was saying about her son just that tends to sweep problems under the rug or something like that so it's like instead of saying that say I love it when you you know always show up to the table and solve problems you know every time there's something negative that's going on the words that you repeat it's like the universe is a tape recorder that everything you declare the universe to be is what you program it to be so you program your kids to be liars they will be liars yeah they may not tell if you focus on something you end up creating it and they will mirror you they will be who you want them to be so it's like don't don't even focus on the lie focus on every time they tell the truth and how much you love them because we're all loving beings we all want your love so if you love while you're loving somebody doing something you want to see them loving you got to declare that you want to say that there's a lack of it then you program them to be the lack of it so that you experience it all the time so it is like you know you are programming everybody in your world the air to be what it is the the ground to be what it is um and you're not consciously aware you're not awake to the fact that you're designing everything so I'm like putting it out there that um, one exercise that we did with her is you know to look out into this beautiful beach that she really feels how soothing and relaxing it was I was like take a breath and just take it all in and then direct all of that love and feeling you're getting from that beach direct it into yourself um, because when self is feeling love then they put the sunglasses of love on and then they start focusing only on the things that are loving and they build that 
they create that, they program that. And that's one of the hardest things to do because um, we've all been programmed to look at hell and only hell and the goal of these elites and these evil evil people want you to constantly focus on everything that's fucking negative. Um, and as long as you focus on negative, you say one negative word, you're programming your universe to be exactly that. So it's time to get positive, time to say we are the solution to this problem. Time to say, you know, the air is getting a little bit too dangerous to breathe in. That now that the technology that we have to clean up that air, we should get to work on it. So, you know, if everybody's waiting for a freaking paycheck to do some work, no, now's the time that we start helping ourselves. Not a nonprofit that's attached to a corporation. Any nonprofit that's getting funding from a corporation generally is there just for your advertisement. I would maybe use a, a you know, a, a nonprofit, but don't give to a nonprofit. Let the corporations give their money to that. Um, but don't buy any products that come from a corporationally funded uh, um, nonprofit. It's time to be a nonprofit within your community. Somebody needs to be growing some healthy farms. Somebody, you know, needs to be fixing something. You know, start developing your skills and see, going out in your community and offering it free. I've always said that I was really successful getting into any different type of career that was really unique. I always volunteered and eventually they started paying me. So volunteerism, you know, something I teach my kids that if you want to develop something and you want to learn something, my daughter really got into horses because she volunteered just shoveling shit for I think three, three weeks solid, never was able to touch a horse, you know, but wanted to learn everything about horses. The first stage was she had to volunteer shoveling shit and the kid did it and ate pea soup and couldn't stand pea soup. You couldn't make her eat anything she doesn't like, but she even ate pea soup to get what she wanted out of something. and. So that's where we need to be. If we want to create a better world, we actually do have to program that better world to create. And where the anger, every time that you're angry and have this impulse that, no, I must do this, I must fight, I must have an enemy, I must pick up a gun, I must protect my side, then you're creating that type of world that's just going to get repeated over and over again. You're always going to find somebody to shoot. You know, somebody's always going to be looking for you, looking for the fight, because there's people in this world that just want to look for fights. But if you don't even play in their playground, don't even talk to anybody that's looking any side, you know, doing something for any other than we want to really help you, not by giving you a pill, but by actually you saying you need help and they actually hand it to you. <laughs> you know, don't let them have their idea of help. You, you know what kind of help you need. When you ask for it and somebody's giving it to you, then that's generally somebody that I would trust, that I don't trust band-aids anymore. So, and it, that, I talked with another guy that was posting on here that he, you know, lost everything, but now he's self-sufficient, he's growing his own garden, he's sharing, it, you know, the extra food with other people. And we were talking about that that was worth so much more than a paycheck. So, um, design the life that you want and it's not going to be with stuff let go of your stuff and start creating for me going to the beach and talking with this girl that really you know started seeing that she was programmed to have a lack of love in herself and she was programming her kids to have a lack of love within themselves and that she was the epicenter that as soon as she started caring for herself and loving herself and started seeing loving things she sees that her kids are smart and that can pull themselves out. You know, the more she encourages them, the more she can heal her own personal health, which we shared phone numbers, and I'm sure that this conversation is going to go on. But she's like, wow, you're saying everything I needed to hear. And, you know, like she attracted it. It was a conversation that came from herself. Um, but she was re really ready to do something and willing to really look at it. One of the hard things was is she was like, I'm really to blame. You know, and it's like technically, yeah, if you're programming everything, you are to blame. That's the tough pill to swallow. But taking blame is the wrong thing to do because to blame is like, well, when did it first start? And it's like, started with God creating us. You know, like it started right from the day we were born. Who are you going to do? Blame God for the problem? It's like, it's pointless to, to lay and blame. Somebody programmed you who programmed them to program you. 
Um, it's all the way down the line, you know, that it ain't just one end elites because they're playing the same game. They're human, exactly the same as us. Create your life. Peace out.